Hello, I'm Dr. Marla Shapiro, professor in the Department of Family and Community Medicine at the University of Toronto, and I sit on the Board of Trustees at the North American Menopause Society. And today we're joined by Dr. Cynthia Stunkel, who probably needs no introduction to those of us who are familiar from you at NAMS, but has spent her entire life really focusing on menopause, internist endocrinologist and reproductive endocrinologist from the University of California, San Diego, and chaired the Endocrine Society's 2015 guidelines for the treatment of symptoms of a menopause. So let's talk about an area that seems to be a little bit controversial for physicians, extended use of hormones, long-term, past age 60, 65. Where do we stand on that? You know, the question of duration is an important one, and when women start out, they often ask, how long will I be on this therapy? In the past, we've always said three to five years, for women with a uterus, maybe seven for women who don't have one. And that's been based on the clinical trial evidence from the Women's Health Initiative primarily. But we found that for some women, that's just not enough. And about half of women find that when they stop hormone therapy, their symptoms come back. So that concern about safety, are we pretending it's not there? Has it gone away? Is there newer evidence? What do we know? What we know is that probably with combined hormone therapy, there's a small but real risk of breast cancer. And I think women need to be informed that this is a possibility, but it's very low, about one in a thousand uh, over a year or two of, of taking combined hormone therapy. For estrogen alone, we don't really see that increased risk until maybe 15 or 20 years out. And so as long as women are informed, as long as they have, at least in the US, we require an annual mammogram before we renew the prescription. Um, and depending on their own personal risk, I think that that's a really modest uh, concern. And for most women, it, it doesn't impede them from taking hormones when they make them feel so much better. So how many women are likely to just not lose those hot flashes and night sweats? The number is surprisingly higher than we thought. And it turns out now, we used to advise women, oh, hot flashes are two to four years. Now we know they can be at least a decade for many women. And so I give women the benefit of the doubt. Plus we know that once you've been on hormones, about half of women will have symptoms recur when they try to stop. So that becomes a challenge. And um, even working very closely with those women, there'll be probably another quarter or so that just absolutely say, I don't want to go off. So uh, for a busy clinician, this could be a substantial number of their patients who want to continue on hormone therapy. So when we look at the quality of life issue, which is so important for so many women, to be able to go through their activities of daily living, not having these horrible hot flashes, what about the heart concerns for them? So the evidence shows us that starting into the 60s, the risk of stroke can increase slightly, and into the 70s, the risk of heart attack can increase slightly. The tricky part is that we don't know from the data if this is for women who start at those ages or what happens when we continue. And so even long-term studies like the Nurses Health Study don't really help us answer that question of if there's a cross point between benefits of hormone and some of the added risks of age. And that's kind of an ongoing question. So for women who are doing well on hormones, mm -hmm. reluctant to start to start to find out if they're going to get the symptoms, what advice do we have for physicians? So there have been some very strong recommendations from the American College of OBGYN as well as the North American Menopause Society that have said that for a woman over 65, if after careful assessment of things like breast cancer risk, heart risk, and counseling in a shared decision kind of format, that woman could be allowed to continue. And most groups recommend, and the Endocrine Society agreed with this too, that annual counseling and annual revisiting of this question makes sense. But some women just feel better, and most people have patients in their 70s and 80s who are clinging to their hormone therapy and saying, I want to continue. So I think as long as women are informed uh, and patients are carefully monitored, that that's an acceptable practice. Pretty reassuring for women and physicians as well. Thank you so much. Thank you.